over and talk about vaccine related data. The British Medical Journal, which is one of the world's oldest medical journals, it was actually founded all the way back in 1840, and four days ago, they published an editorial demanding the full and immediate release of all data relating to COVID vaccines as well as to COVID treatments. Their argument is that such data is extremely important for the public to have access to, especially given all the mandates that have been put into place. Here's specifically what they wrote. Today, despite the global rollout of COVID-19 vaccines and treatments, the anonymized participant-level data underlying the trials for these new products remain inaccessible to doctors, researchers, and the public, and are likely to remain that way for years to come. This is morally indefensible for all trials, but especially for those involving major public health interventions. The journal then went on in this editorial to accuse the giant pharmaceutical companies of, quote, reaping vast profits without adequate independent scrutiny of their scientific claims. And then further down in the editorial, they specifically highlighted Pfizer, who had their vaccine trial, quote, funded by the company and designed, run, analyzed, and authored by Pfizer employees. Now, Pfizer is actually a very interesting case in this particular regard because they are indeed still holding on to all of their trial data and they have indicated that they will not begin to even consider requests for such data to be released until May of 2025, which will be a full two years after their primary study ends on May 15th of 2023, which is listed over on clinicaltrials.gov. And so essentially, their primary study is still ongoing. It's scheduled to be completed in May of next year. And then Pfizer has indicated that they will not release the data from that study until another two years after the completion date, which will be all the way in May of 2025. And of course, besides this incident, we've already discussed in several previous episodes how the FDA was asking a federal judge to allow them 75 full years to release all the data concerning the Pfizer vaccine. However, of course, what happened is that the judge in that case, he actually ruled against the FDA. And so now that agency is required to release all of their documents at a pace of about 55,000 pages a month, which means that we should have all the FDA's Pfizer documents in hand by about September of this year. Now, these FDA documents will, of course, not include all of the data from Pfizer, but at least it is a start. Regardless, though, the British Medical Journal, they also noted that AstraZeneca, which is, of course, another vaccine manufacturer, they have also indicated that they may be ready to possibly hand over some of the data from a number of their phase three trials. However, AstraZeneca themselves, they say that the timeline for releasing such data can, quote, vary per request and can take up to a year upon full submission of the request for analysis, decision, anonymization, and sharing of the requested data or documents. And so as a result of this type of situation, the British Medical Journal, they concluded by saying that they have the publications, but they do not have the underlying data. Here's specifically what they wrote, quote, we are left with publications, but no access to the underlying data on reasonable request. This is worrying for trial participants, researchers, clinicians, journal editors, policymakers, and the public. The journals that have published these primary studies may argue that they face an awkward dilemma caught between making the summary findings available quickly and upholding the best ethical values that support timely access to our underlying data. In our view, there is no dilemma. The anonymized individual participant data from clinical trials must be made available for independent scrutiny. And then furthermore, in a rather pointed criticism of the general current situation, the British Medical Journal added this in that same editorial, quote, regulators are not there to dance to the tune of rich global corporations and enrich them further, but to protect the general public's health. And for that reason, we need complete data transparency for all studies. We need it in the public interest and we need it now. And in fact, the calls for more data transparency are really beginning to add up because besides this editorial in the British Medical Journal, besides that earlier lawsuit we discussed with the FDA, you also have this lawsuit right here in which an organization called ICANN, which specifically stands for the Informed Consent Action Network, otherwise abbreviated to ICANN, they actually sued the CDC because they were withholding their um, their post-licensure V-Safe data. Now, in case you've never heard of the V-Safe data, here Here's how it is described on the CDC's own website. Quote, an active surveillance program to monitor the safety of COVID-19 vaccines during the period when the, when the vaccines are authorized for use under the Food and Drug Administration emergency use authorization and possibly early after vaccine licensure. And so in plain speak, what the vSafe system is, is essentially it's an app that allows people who got the vaccine to inform the CDC of any possible side effects that they experienced after getting the shot. And you would imagine that the data that came from this vSafe system could be made public if you just de, uh, de-identified the data, meaning that you, you took out the personal information, the names, birthdays, et cetera, of the people who reported these side effects, and then you can make the data public. However, the CDC has not done that. 
However, what they have done, and this is where things get really weird, is that they did give the information, the de-identified information, to a private computer technology company called Oracle. Here's, in fact, what it says on a PDF that you can find over on the CDC's own website. Quote, this data will be collected, managed, and housed on a secure server by Oracle. Through Health and Human Services, Oracle has donated IT services to any agency conducting COVID-19 related activities. All data will be stored, processed, and transmitted in accordance with the Federal Information Security Modernization Act and based on NIST standards. Now, in and of itself, that's not too weird. It's just that Oracle is providing the IT infrastructure for the CDC to house all this data. However, ICANN, which is the, again, the organization that's suing the CDC, they want the CDC to produce the same de-identified data to the general public in order to assure transparency in regards to the vaccines. Here's, in fact, what they wrote as a part of their statement, quote, The FDA and CDC have now made crystal clear that their promise of transparency with regard to COVID-19 vaccines was hogwash. As everyone now knows, the FDA has asked a federal judge to give it at least 75 years to produce the pre-authorization slash licensure safety data. And we now know with certainty, federal health authorities similarly want to hide the post-authorization licensure safety data as well. Based on the CDC's own documentation, the data submitted to vSafe is already available in de-identified form with no personal health information and could be immediately released to the public. However, this is where things get a little weird because before filing a lawsuit, ICANN, which is again this nonprofit, they, through their attorneys, filed several Freedom of Information Act requests against the CDC in order to request this, um, this de-identified data to which, and this is where, again, the things get so murky, the CDC acknowledged their request and they wrote that, and they wrote this, quote, vSafe data contains approximately 119 million medical entries. However, they are declining to produce it because the information in the app is not de-identified. And so this is where things begin to not really add up because when this nonprofit filed a Freedom of Information Act request against the CDC in order to get this de-identified data, the CDC says that, hey, we have this data, but it's not de-identified. However, on their very own website, they said that they put the full de-identified data on the Oracle platform. And so both of these statements can be true together, leading the nonprofit who is again suing the CDC to say this, quote, despite the fact that this de-identified data already exists, that it is already in the hands of a private company and that the CDC has never objected to its production, the CDC has so far failed to produce it to ICANN or to the American public, the same people being mandated to take this liability-free product. But don't worry, ICANN will not rest until this data is made public and so today has commenced a lawsuit against the CDC and the HHS demanding that a court compel them to release this data. Now, we here at the Epic Times, we did reach out to the CDC for comment on this case. However, they got back to us saying that they cannot comment on pending litigation. And we did also reach out to the Department of Health and Human Services, and they actually did not get back to us at all. Regardless, though, I think there are a few key takeaways from these cases. The first one is that I believe more and more people are beginning to wake up to the fact that the clinical trial data is not actually publicly available. I think in the past, a lot of people just assumed that it was. Maybe they never saw it for themselves, but they just assumed, well, hey, I'm sure it's available out there. But I believe more and more people are beginning to wake up to the fact that it's not with the, the publication of lawsuits like these. And then also, I believe that more and more pressure is coming on the government organizations and maybe even the pharmaceutical companies to release the cl clinical trial data. Of course, the FDA lawsuit's a great example. The FDA actually lost that suit, and now they have to produce uh, 55,000 pages per month until all the documents are released, which will uh, be in September of this year when all the documents are released. And then who knows what will happen to the CDC case right here. And of course, the British Medical Journal is a, is a storied organization. I mean, it's one of the world's oldest medical journals. And so their opinion, the opinion of their editorial board, board will hopefully have a lot of sway so that we as the public can actually know what is going on behind the scenes with these vaccines that are now being rolled out and that are being mandated not only across the country, but across the entire world. So as soon as I know anything regarding this new lawsuit here, I'll let you know right away. Until then, Roman in the studio, back to you.